Welcome to the Connected Leaders Academy Virtual Conference, designed to reshape your vision of transformation. As we navigate the evolving business landscape, our speakers will unveil innovative strategies to manage and initiate change. Prepare to adapt, innovate, and lead, ensuring your role in this transformative era. Hello, everyone. I'm Jay Fairbrother, the Mastermind Guy, and welcome to today's live session. It's part of the CLA conference here. Hope you're having a great Saturday. I am actually down in Orlando at a uh, conference uh, for coaches uh, this weekend and um, took a break to be able to be here with you. So I'm excited. So um, my first uh, question that I want to ask for you is who is interested in the idea of attracting and keeping clients for three years rather than three months? That's the title of this talk. And I want to talk to you about not only why that's important, but how you can do that. So I'm assuming that most of you would have raised your hand on that one. I'd, I'd love clients for three years. And who would like better clients, better quality clients, clients who show up, do the work, get the transformation that you help with? Anybody up for that one? Yeah. So that's one of the most frustrating things about being a thought leader, a speaker, a coach, is when we work with clients who don't get results. And they might love us and love our program, but they didn't get results. And so to me, that's the part of the equation of getting better clients in the first place. And then who wants more clients? Everyone? Like when we, especially when we're starting business, it's all about more, 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 more leads, more traffic, more clients. And often that leads us into these cycles of roller coaster revenue because you might do a launch and get a bunch of uh, clients at once or a bunch of leads at once. And then you've got nothing in between launches and you don't have that sort of regular stability of income. So that's part of the concept of what I call the fewer better, longer mastermind model is to get out of the situation where it's a constant struggle, a constant churn for more leads, more revenue, more launches, more clients. So I want to tell you, I'm talking about masterminds, right? And if you look at most seven, eight figure coaches, over 80% of them have a high ticket mastermind, and that is the engine which fuels most of the revenue in their business. It might appear to many people in the general public or, or on their lists that they're making, you know, million dollars from selling courses or doing short-term coaching packages. But when you actually talk to them about where their revenue comes from and what creates a seven, eight, or nine-figure business as a thought leader, speaker, or coach, it usually revolves around a high ticket program. And in most cases, those high ticket programs are masterminds. But just because those seven, eight, nine figure coaches are doing masterminds isn't reason enough for you to do one. And in a minute, I'll give you some reasons as to why I think the mastermind model is the best high ticket program to create for your business to scale. But first, before we get there, let's talk a little bit about my background and my story with masterminds and, and uh, why, why you should care or why you should listen to the remainder of, of this little talk. So I have been a serial entrepreneur for 30 years. I founded, bought and sold seven figure businesses, done a lot of different things, consulting, coaching, and I am at a point in my life where it's hard for me to remember what I had for breakfast yesterday, but I vividly remember 25 years ago, walking out of my very first mastermind meeting and saying to myself, oh my God, I finally found my tribe. Like 
I knew after that first mastermind meeting that like these were my, my people. They got me. They were me. They had, had the same fat challenges and fears and frustrations and similar aspirations and goals. And I loved it. I was all in. What, so what happened, though, after in that first mastermind that I was in, I did not anticipate. And it frankly shocked me because we joined that mastermind at the time. It was a mastermind for entrepreneurs just to grow our businesses and be better entrepreneurs. And within about six months of being in that mastermind, in these meetings, I'm watching grown men start to break down and cry as they start to open up and talk about their screwed up marriages and their kid problems and how the you know pressure from running the business is creating anxiety and depression. And this wasn't what we signed up for, but I was all in. Because for me, it was my first real experience as an adult with real human connection. My father died when I was 10 years old, suddenly of a heart attack. So I kind of disconnected from life after, as a result of that, got angry at the world and uh, kind of became a lone wolf. So this level of connection where I'm watching people really open up and get vulnerable about very personal things I, that I had I not experienced. And as I, you know, sort of became more of an adult and started to realize, you know what, most people don't have this level of connection, even in their families. And entrepreneurs, especially, it's a lonely occupation to be an entrepreneur. Most of our family and friends and, and associates don't understand the kind of stuff we go through. Most of the really deep personal issues we can't really discuss with vendors and clients and employees. So who do we have but other entrepreneurs that can help us? And I'll come back to that in a second. So my story, I love the mastermind concept. I was all in. I started joining every mastermind I could. And over the next six or seven years, I joined another six or seven masterminds. And um, as a result, my business took off. I grew that first business, which was at about a million dollars in revenue when I joined that first mastermind. And I grew that business to $10 million in revenue and I sold it in 2004. And life was good. Life was very good. Life's good after you sell a business. So I traveled, I invested in many different types of things and I bought three other businesses after that sale. And then if any of you have been in a situation where your life was kind of going along swimmingly and something unexpected happens, in 2008, the world financial crisis started. And by 2012, I lost everything. So I quite literally, within that time frame, went from being a multimillionaire living in a mansion to living in my friend's basement, broke, bankrupt, divorced, alone, humiliated, and ashamed because for 15 years, I had built this identity as this really successful serial entrepreneur. And there I was sitting in that basement. I didn't even own a car. It took me far too long to climb my butt out of that basement and get back in the game. But the I can tell you the only reason I made it through that time was because of the one mastermind that I stayed in through that time. It was that first mastermind that I joined, which I stayed in for 17 years. Those people not only helped me with the basement to live in and a car I could borrow for seven months, but they helped me in ways I can't even articulate in terms of the support to carry me through that time, that PTSD, that shame. And so in a very, very real sense, masterminds helped me 10x my first business and helped save my life during the most difficult time period I had. So I'm a huge believer in peer learning and especially how it's distinguished from the regular, from other types of learning. So let's talk a minute about what a mastermind is because there is a lot of confusion out there about this. So 
in the world of thought leaders, coaches, and speakers, I would say 80% of what is labeled a mastermind is really just group coaching, where you show up and you pray to the altar of the guru. There's a little Q&A, maybe a hot seat for good measure, but they slap a mastermind label on it because it's sexier and they can charge more money. What a true mastermind is, Napoleon Hill coined the term many, many years ago. And his concept was simple. You put one person with a brain in a room, a second person with a brain, and you create this third invisible, intangible force that he called the mastermind. And so if you imagine putting eight to 14 brains in a room, the size of that invisible, intangible force that you create, when you tap into their collective wisdom, their collective experience, and their collective knowledge. So in a true mastermind format, it's about everyone being equals and everyone, all the participants being equals, everyone being supportive of each other, and they're there to help each other grow and thrive. What when I use the number eight to 14, what that references is that in a true mastermind meeting, every in every meeting, every person should feel like they have a voice and participates. And so if you put 20 or 30 people in a meeting, you're gonna need a four to six hour meeting in order to feel like everyone had a voice, right? Now, there are ways to scale up masterminds beyond that eight to 14 number. And it's by what I call creating a hybrid program, which is a cross between group coaching and that pure mastermind. There's ways to create something that's in the middle where you borrow some of the strategies and techniques and protocols that we use in masterminding. If you trickle those down into what would otherwise be a group coaching program, you can get better results and implementation for your clients. So there's many different types of masterminds that you can create. There are peer masterminds, there are industry masterminds, there are masterminds which are pure, purely your role as facilitation, and there are masterminds that combine elements of coaching, training, support and accountability, and then of course the facilitation co-collaboration. So when I help people create a mastermind of their own for themselves and for their own businesses, we start with, you know, what are your superpowers? What, what are you best at? And I'll give you an example. I had a client once who, who listened to a talk like this and got excited about this idea of running a true mastermind where all she did is facilitate. And I said to her, you know, you have been a, an MBA professor for 30 years. Teaching is in your DNA. So let's not go totally against your nature, your DNA to create a mastermind where all you're doing is facilitating. Let's take advantage of that superpower and build a mastermind around that where you can still maybe 75% of it is you doing the facilitation but let's not ignore that teaching component. So that's what I mean by you need to figure out the mastermind that's right for you because you shouldn't create Napoleon Hill's mastermind or my, I run three masterminds of my own. A mastermind that you create for yourself shouldn't be exactly like any of the three that I run uh, for me and, and has to be unique to you and take advantage of your superpowers most importantly, deliver the maximum transformation for your clients. So I mentioned I'd come back to why masterminds are a good idea for growing your business. And I'll come back to what I call the fewer, better, longer mastermind model. Fewer clients, better clients, longer term clients. So let's look at the fewer. Let's do a little math if we can. <clears throat> so if you have a $1,500 course or a $1,500 coaching package, you need 67 clients 
just to reach six figures in revenue. And getting 67 of anything is hard, let alone clients. So with the mastermind model, you can reach six figures with as few as eight, 10 or 12 clients because you're creating that high ticket program, high ticket, high touch, high value, high transformation. And so you can do it with, you can create that program without having thousands of leads or, or thousands of traffic eyeballs uh, hitting you every month. You can do it without the huge email list. You can do it without the big, huge, fancy sales funnel with you know the branches and you've seen those trees with all the steps, right? Not that there's anything wrong with traffic and, and funnels and that kind of thing. But if you want the quickest way to add six figures in revenue to your business, regardless of where you're at right now, a high ticket program, a mastermind program is one of the fastest and easiest ways to get there. And then let's talk about better clients. Because have any of you ever had a client, maybe in a course or a group coaching program, who paid for the program, maybe even showed up, but didn't do the work and didn't get the client, the result that, that you're trying to help them with at the end of the program? And they might even, you know, love you and they, they say, I love the program, but they didn't actually get the result. To me, that's one of the most frustrating things that happens. I'd almost rather them just not show up and I don't know what's going on is worse than them showing up and not getting the result I'm trying to help them with. One of the critical things about a high ticket mastermind program is that your clients become hand selected. It's not just whoever can write the check to get into the program. You create exclusivity in terms of how the program is positioned and branded, how there's how there is an application process that no, you can't just write the check. You have to apply to be accepted into the program because I'm very careful about who I allow in because it's important that you're a perfect fit for all the other participants going through the program. So it almost in some ways flips the selling script. We you're not constantly chasing clients and 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 feeling like you're 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 just the the chasing the the what's the dog chasing the bumper, um, where you you know become the gatekeeper to this exclusive intimate tribe that you want to make sure you let the right people into. And because you get to work with clients for longer term, you can have more impact and more transformation. And that's the concept of keeping and attracting clients for three years, not three months. So when you offer short-term programs, maybe you have a six or eight week course, or you have a three month uh, group coaching program, usually those programs have a specific, in order to sell them, right? In your marketing, you have to articulate very specific outcomes. By the end of this program, you should expect X, Y, Z, whatever, you know, assuming you do the work, you should get X, Y, and Z at the end of this program. Well, often when the clients go through those programs and get that result, they're like, thank you very much. You gave me the result I came for. I'm moving on. I'm going to the next guru. I'm going to the next shiny object. When you create a mastermind where you ask people to commit up front for six or 12 months, but you set the expectation from the beginning that this doesn't end in six or 12 months. This is just the initial commitment. And here are the promises. Here are the outcomes we hope you to get you help you achieve in those six or 12 months. But it's ongoing. If you're getting value from this program, you, there's no leaving. You can stay forever. You can stay for three years. You can stay maybe for 17 years like I stayed in that one mastermind. So that's the concept with the fewer, better, longer model is fewer clients get out of this always more, more, more mentality. Fewer clients using a more high, low tech, high touch approach. Better clients, the ones who are paying enough, investing enough, first of all, to get 
transformation, right? People who, who buy cheap programs don't show up and don't do the work, right? They're not as committed to the investment. Whereas when you're selling a high ticket program, they're in it. Now, now it's like, I've got to make this work, right? And then longer term clients. So I want to give you quickly, with the time I have left, two quick keys to running effective masterminds. The first is about creating the container because a lot of people think, oh, okay, mastermind, I've heard about that. Can't be that hard. I'll just get a group of similar people together and we'll get together and have some wine and talk about our problems. Well, that can work for a while, but it's not going to work for 17 years. Masterminds need structure and they need a clear direction to make sure that people know the, you know, have some expectations of how things flow, what's going to happen, what are the commitments I'm making, uh, what are the protocols that, that we're using and rules for participating in the mastermind. So that's one of the keys. The next key is finding the right fit people. Allowing the wrong person, a single wrong person into your you know, small mastermind, that eight to 14, can literally be like a cancer in, in the group. Because what you're trying to do, and this is, again, the distinction between group coaching and masterminds, what you're trying to do is build the relationships with those people in the program. That's the human connection piece. That's the important piece. So that it's no longer a one-to-guru relationship, but it's a one-to-many relationship. And that's why people will stay in programs longer than a year or two, because, because of the relationships they've built with all the other participants going through the program, as much as the relationship to you, the guru leading it. So I'd love to have more time to go into all the other reasons that I think masterminds are a great uh, way to scale your business. But I want to make sure I mention uh, the gift that I'm offering to CLA members, which is actually a free VIP ticket to my upcoming uh, virtual boot camp in November. It's called Six Figure Masterminds Boot Camp. It's three full days where you come into the boot camp. And we start working on exactly what kind of mastermind you can create. How do you put those pieces of the puzzle together to take advantage of your strengths as well as deliver the most result for your client? Then we get into who are the right fit people. In my uh, world, we call them purple fish. Who are your purple fish that you are going to make sure your me messaging and marketing and branding is attracting the right purple fish? And then we look at what is a, you know, what, once we figure those things out, then we look at what is a simple model that you can use without the big fancy sales funnel to get people interested in this program. And then we create a plan of action for you to walk out of the three days with uh, steps that you're going to take to start putting it into action. So this is uh, over $100 uh, worth of uh, value to get the VIP ticket to this boot camp. Because of today and CLA, you're, you guys are getting it for free. Uh, the inf you'll find the information on how to do that. And um, also, you'll if you sign up, you'll also get invited to a workshop prior to earlier than uh, November that you, will help you start this process of figuring out what your mastermind is. So I hope you got some value today. I'm honored to be here as part of CLA, as a CLA member and speaker, and uh, I'd love to hear from you. Um, I'm pretty easy to find on the internet. If you want to track me down, have any questions, let me know. Thanks very much. I'm Jay Fairbrother, the Master Guy. Thank you for participating in today's enlightening session. As we transition to our next expert, remember that each strategy and insight is a step toward becoming a transformative leader in your field. Visit ConnectedLeadersAcademy.com to stay engaged and informed. The journey of change is ongoing. Let's move forward together.